For more on this, I'm joined by Avner Gavriahu. He's the co-director of Breaking the Silence, an organization of veteran soldiers who've served in the Israeli military since the start of the Second Intifada and have routinely exposed to the public the reality of what it is like to enforce the occupation in the occupied West Bank. Avner, it's good to see you again. Thank you for being with us. I, I should tell our viewers, you, you sort of helped me through um, the West Bank and understanding what that occupation looks like on the ground. And when things like this happen in Geneva, it becomes complicated for my viewers to understand. Was this an effort to get rid of militants, or what the Israeli government calls terrorists, or was this something else? Because the things that I've heard from you are that sometimes the line is blurred between actually rooting out people who are going to kill Israeli civilians and enforcing the occupation. Yeah, so uh, it's great to be here and great to see you again. Um, I mean, I, I think we have to be uh, clear here. Uh, the Israeli government has not only the authority, but the respons responsibility to protect its citizens. But I think what, what, what we're seeing and what is unfolding in Jenin and generally in the north part of the West Bank um, is a very distorted concept of security. Um, and this distorted concept of security is based on the assumption that in order for the Israeli citizens living in the occupied West Bank, illegally under international law, to live there and to feel secure, basically Palestinians have to feel insecure. Um, and there are different ways that Israel has been doing this, and this has been sort of the MO of the Israeli military for many years. Uh, many have, many, many remember the operations during the Second Intifada, but also um, in times that are not uh, um, uprises or as violent as the Second Intifada, the Israeli army routinely enters uh, city centers and definitely refugee camps. But what we've seen um, in this last operation is an escalation. I think many have, have called this sort of the Gazification of Janine or the beginning of the Gazification of Janine, right, referring to the, the, the Gaza Strip, where a lot of the practices that we've seen and we've met soldiers who have served in the Gaza Strip described similar things to what we've seen in this latest, latest operation, obviously in a smaller scale, but taking one area, one of the most densely populated areas, um, and, and basically uh, shooing people out or making it unlivable for the people living there, that's exactly the practices we saw in Gaza. Uh, airstrikes, just a month ago, the first airstrike in the refugee camp, first one in 20 years, this operation 20, um, and, and this is a very, very dangerous um, reality that we see unfolding. Uh, I don't think this is bringing uh, Israelis any security. Um, additionally to what you mentioned, um, an Isra another Israeli was killed, another Israeli soldier was killed, and a Palestinian as well. So security this is not giving us, but definitely a promise uh, for more and more of these operations. So I, this is why I want everybody to meet you, right? I, I literally tell everyone I have this discussion with, go go to the Middle East and I, I'll set you up with, with uh, Breaking the Silence and Avner to have this conversation, because the narrative as it plays out here in the United States on the ground is that Israel needs to be secure. And, and that's, a, that's a fact. That, that, that there's, there should be zero debate about that. A, Israel needs to be secure. B, Israel has some neighbors and some leadership uh, among those neighbors who b b not believe that not to be true, right? They, they make threats about Israel and Israeli people and Jews and being pushed into the sea. Those two things are real. But there's this real, there's this truth in the middle, and that is places like Janine and Gaza, for that matter, are hell. They are terrible places to live, often occupied. In the case of Janine, it's a refugee camp. It's, it's occupied now for more than 55 years by people and their children and their grandchildren who were removed from their houses when the state of Israel was formed and got no recompense for that. So they are, they are three generations of angry. Um, it, the occupation creates a cycle of people who are angry who then do things that uh, threaten the safety of Israelis, who then do things that threaten the safety of Palestinians. It's a cycle that needs to break. And, and, and I think in exactly on that point, um, I was part of that cycle. I mean, I was a, a paratrooper. I served uh, in exactly in those areas around Nablus and Janine. Uh, I was a sniper, a sergeant of a sniper's team. Part of what I did almost every night was home invasions, what we call straw widows, where you basically use a private Palestinian house as an observation point or a sniper's point. 
These are exactly the photos coming out of the Janine refugee camp. And, and you mentioned cycles. I mean, what I've been thinking about this entire week, week and a half, uh, especially since we've seen this operation in, in, in Janine unfold, um, I can't stop thinking about the Palestinians that I uh, woke up in the middle of the night, that I frightened to death, handcuffed their father, used their living room as, as a military post, and, and thinking, you know, maybe one of these kids was one of the uh, Palestinians that went and attacked soldiers. I mean, uh -huh. this this cycle that um, we can basically look at most of the Israeli governments, but definitely under this Israeli government, the only promise that they are giving us, um, their citizens and Palestinians under their control, um, is more death, is more violence. And, and the dangerous, dangerous steps this government has taken already in entrenching the occupation and moving forward with annexation are unfolding. I mean, this government basically backtracked um, on the disengagement law, uh, the disengagement from the Gaza Strip and the north of the West Bank, where Janine is. And this yeah. basically has opened the door for hundreds, if not thousands, of settlers to settle exactly in these yeah. areas. And that's happening right now. It is useful to know that there are people like you in Israel who are uh, working toward that stopping. But uh, for the moment, the momentum is on the other side. Avner, thanks very much for joining us, as always, and for the work you do. Avner Gavriah, who is the co-director of Breaking the Silence.